be working with a simple, simple embroidery hoop today. This is going to be a super simple um, wreath. This is a 12 inch embroidery hoop. They have these little doujabies here where you can release the tension. Okay. Now I had this really thick, thick piece of wool and I thought, I love these colors. They just scream Christmas to me. So when I cut my fabric, I tried to stay at least an inch outside, but the fabric was pretty narrow, but it still, it still fits, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the inner hoop and you're gonna drop it over top of that. Find the center, because this fabric has um, a design on it that's striped, um, checked, plaid, whatever, you wanna kinda of make sure that your little adjustable part is kinda of centered. You don't want it to look off kilter because you're going to be putting your um, greenery up top here. So that's why I wanna be super careful and make sure that I have it where I need it to be. And it's just a matter of releasing this. Let me release it a little more. And popping it over top of the bottom hoop. Now because this fabric is really thick, it's going to be really tight. Now see, see how that stripe kind of lines up and goes straight down? That's what you want. All right. Now, what you can do, and I probably won't with this one because I want to be able to use it again and again, you can glue the inside and then when you push it down, it will stay firm. All right, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna trim this um, fabric so it's not hanging over the sides. So it's just a matter of using the hoop as your guide. To trim it off. So I'm just like resting my scissors on the outer hoop and just trimming as I go around. Everybody hear me okay? I couldn't go on at two today because I have an appointment, so I thought I would try this morning instead. I'm going to get it a little closer. There. And let, this is here, so you can adjust it and make it tighter if you want. But there you go. Now, this was just leftover scrap fabric that I had, and it's a wool. All right, so what I did was I made a couple of signs that I thought would be really cute for this. Okay, there's one. It says, when, car when cardinals appear, angels are near. And then this one, that what I can do is I can personalize it. This one has poinsettias. Can you see it okay? How's that? Ugh. I'll hold it on the ends like that. That's my last name. It's a split design and you just run the um, name down the middle. Now, what we're going to do is I have some burlap rope here. And what I'm going to do is try and find the center here. Because this is 12. My center is going to be like at 6. So that's about where it should go. Four on this side, four on this side, a little less. There we go. 
then I'm going to thread this through my needle because this is how I'm going to attach it. Now you could, if you wanted, you could go ahead and use um, Velcro. You could put a piece of Velcro on the back of the sign and then Velcro on your fabric. I just thought this would make it look rustic, which is what the look I'm going for. Hey, Susan. Hey, Missy. I got a surprise to show everybody that I got from Missy because I'm done here share all right so I just use the the tape to kind of make the end easier to slide through my needle so I'm going to thread that through now if you wanted to I'm going to do it Let's see if I can do it this way if you wanted to you could just have the thread go through the back that's not what I wanted. I want the thread to go the other way. These signs are not listed in my Etsy shop yet, but I will have them listed probably by the end of today. I want it to go up because I want to put the tie on the outside. And the tie on the front will kind of disguise the hole I lost my place. Right, now I'm doing it the wrong way again. All right, let me see here. Visually challenged this morning. <laughs> okay, I know what I needed to do. I need to pull the untape and through once that way and then pull it through the top this way there we go that's what i wanted because i want to be able to knot this to the fabric and have it part of the design just to make it look rustic there we go and then i'm going to just tie a knot Like I said, I want it to look rustic. And you need a stiff fabric to do this. Move that over just a little bit. Everybody doing good today? I got happy mail from Missy. I'm just going to tie the top two for now, for sake of time purposes. That's the easy way to thread a needle when you have all these fibers that you want to get through it. But the object is to tape it good. You weren't on last night I did put to the side here the pumpkins we made and then the um, tear tray that we decorated and like I said you need really stiff fabric in order to do this Ooh, cool y'all wouldn't mind spreading the love I'd so appreciate all right how did I do this before all right I'm gonna take it down through but only pull half of the rope through which I want this long piece to go through there we go and then come back up through 
going to tie it. It's not center, so I'm going to have to go back and fix it. But this will give you the visual. Thank you, Tanya. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's under videos. You'll be able to see it. Okay. So we've got that on there. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways. All right. First of all, if we were going to use the cardinal one, I think I can do it from this angle. We would attach like these to the top. Um, I would also stick some berries in here. I love these berries. They look like they have snow on them. I don't know if you can see them. They sparkle. Hi, Carol. So you have your little um, adjustment at the top where you adjust the hoop. You can you could take these and tie them together with, with wire and put them on there. Then you could go ahead and place your cardinal right over. Now, I don't like this cardinal with this fabric. I think I would go and distress it a little to darken it up some or find the cardinal that matches the best. So there we have it using the cardinal. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> so there you go. So there it is in cardinal, right? Which I need a better cardinal. I'm not liking him. He's too bright. I'm going to be making a deer one too. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to add some antlers here and I would probably add um, more realistic pine and then add the deer antlers on here too with possibly a deer head I don't know but right now we're going to use the point setas to go with this one and I think I'm liking this better than the other that I had chosen or I could go ahead and use this one with it. Let's go ahead and use this one. I know, right? And it's so simple. It's just a piece of fabric. Now, I need my wire cutters. To shorten these a little. I just wanted to give you some different ideas of what you could do with it. So you can put these two here. And what I ha have here is a larger poinsettia. When you're working with a red, it's kind of hard because there are so many variations of red. So you really got to be sure in the beginning when you're putting this together that all your colors kind of go now for this i may add just a little more black in here because then it'll really it'll really match that and then i would go with like two smaller ones on the side um, because there are some berries in the picture you could add your berries also But wouldn't that make somebody a really nice gift for Christmas? You've taken the time to personalize it. And I, I will personalize any sign that you want personalized. I know, right? Simple, elegant, pretty. Um, I thought this was cute too. Which I thought about doing an owl one too. Because look at that. Could incorporate that into the design somehow. Um, 
if we did this one, you could also find small snowflakes and just glue some small snowflakes. Let me cut off the, the rope. It just looks so elegant. Just simple. I'm going to cut the hole off the top. That looks kind of stupid. Doesn't that, look, doesn't that pop against the red? So much you can do with this. And it's just a simple embroidery hoop. In fact, I go to this reuse it store and I found this embroidery hoop for a dollar. And look at how we're dressing it up. Isn't that adorable? Let me see if I can hold it up. And again, I can, when you order the sign, I can also poke the holes in it for you. All you have to do is let me know. But look how simple that is. I also thought if you didn't want this on there, look, I have this black. Now, I, I thought about the red and black check, but you know what? There are so many variations of it. It really does not do it justice. So... You wouldn't even need all this greenery. You could just put a simple bow at the top. Now I gotta be careful because this bow has lettering on it and you know how I am about my lettering. And this, this is a Sam's Club ribbon, and it has poinsettias on it. It has black and red Christmas trees. Look at that. You've got your, your thing up here to tie it to. I'm going to take that back down so I can tie it to the back. And then you can just make a simple hanger for it. Come on cooperate. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can do it simply with a hoop. There we go. That's the way I wanted it to go. You could even do the bow with the greenery if you wanted. And your loops don't have to be that big because you want to stay in the zone with the size of your hoop. So you don't need a big bow on this to make a statement. All right. So now, because my lettering is to me upside down, I just send or spend the time to make an extra twist because I'm really anal about that. I don't like my lettering upside down. It just looks to me as though I didn't take the time to do it right. Okay, this rope is not holding. So we're going to go to my all-time favorite, my crazy tie. That'll hold it. This is coming apart. Let's go. Get in there. There we go. 
Now we got it. All right, twist, extra twist to get your wording going in the right direction. That shows you took the time to do it right. I think that's an important step when you're decorating a wreath. So I will be coming up with some more um, designs. So I don't think this matches that fabric that good. I think I need to get more white and gold and black in this ribbon to match the sign. There we go. So I wanted to even take one of these and put it in the bow. Okay. Simple. So simple. And with this in there, I mean, they're going to love you. You took the extra time to make it special. And look, we can add some of that. We can add some of this. That way we're pulling the green out from the sign. And then we can stick some of our berries in here. And you again have that adjuster on the hoop to adjust to tie to. Look, how simple is that? These signs are very lightweight. So if you're using these signs with a very sturdy fabric like a wool, a cotton is not going to cut it. A cotton is going to be too thin. All right. So you're going to need something. Look at that. I just created some visual interest. I pulled out the colors from the bow and put it on the surface. So that's a way you can make everything go together. Um, you wouldn't even need a sign. You could use a little ornament in the middle. As long as you're using a thick fabric like this wool, it's going to stay. Now my big needle did not work. The head of it was too big to go through. So I'd use like a little cruel needle is what I think what it's called. It has a pretty big um, eye on it, but it went right through. Wouldn't you love to get that as a gift? Hey, Esther. And if you really wanted to get into it, okay. Hi, Tequila. Welcome. How are you, girl? I've been missing you. You could even add, cause see, I like to, I like to make mine look kind of primitive. So I could even add some of this in there to kind of pull it back to my way of, of decorating with the country. So again, simple hoop with wool fabric. Okay, we could put this in here. We could do the, the cardinal and then we can put the cardinal Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. You could mount the cardinal in the sign. Let's put him so he's facing out. Because see, this has got the black and white. So again, this is just one. These are just two in the series of these signs that I'll be making for this type of wreath. If you have, thank you, dear. Appreciate it. Um, give me, give me some ideas. What do you want to see in a little sign to go on a wreath? I have all different color backgrounds. <laughs> we can personalize the sign. We can put a saying on it. We could do one that's just welcome. 
um, because it's trouble, you know, you have a lot of trouble matching your reds. You're better off staying with a neutral background. Um, we could do a buffalo check. Like the white and black buffalo check looks better on the red and black if you were going with that color. Um, wouldn't this be awesome in a green and, and black check? But you need a solid fabric. A cotton is not going to cut it. You need something like the wool. Fleece is kind of stretchy. So fleece probably won't do it either. Heck, when I go to my, my, my creative place, I call it, I'm going to be looking for extra sturdy cloth um, placemats. You're just cutting your fabric at least an inch larger than the frame. You can glue the frame steadfast to it if this is the way you're going to do it. I want to be able to show this in different ways, so I'm probably just going to be, you know, um, I'm not going to glue the wood to the fabric. The right thing to do would be to glue your, your fabric to the inner hoop and then stretch this over top. But isn't that, now uh, wouldn't you want to get that? I would want to get that as a gift. And look, all we were talking was a piece of scrap fabric and a few greenery, a bow. You don't need the bow. I showed you how to do it with just the um, poinsettias. But... There you go, all different kind of ideas. And like I said, I can make a sign however you want it. If you just want it to say welcome to and have the person's names down there, I can, I can do it however you want me to do it. And all we used was a little bit of thread there, um, burlap roping to tie it on. Um, you could use little, little, make little bows. Um, then you could incorporate this in your bow. A whole bunch of ideas. We could do one with a deer on it. And we could add the antlers in here. This frame is really sturdy and it's going to hold up. There, look at that. We'll do one with a deer. So you could put antlers in it. I want your ideas. If you have an idea for a sign, give it to me because I think that's important to make what you are looking for. And Susan knows it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Susan. She knows because she gives me ideas all the time. Now, I got some happy mail today from Missy with a beautiful thank you card. I ordered a pumpkin from Missy. Check that out. And I'm going to have to make that part of my tear tray display. So this is going to inspire me to come up with a whole different um, way of doing it. But look, check it out. This was the display we made last night. We did the pumpkins. And then I showed you how to decorate a tear tray. Um, we have a charger plate on the bottom, which I'll be listing those later on my Etsy shop. Wouldn't even need the tear tray with this pumpkin. I mean, you could put this on, on here and just put a bunch of leaves on there. A lot of ideas with that. Wouldn't that be pretty? Thank you, Missy. I just love it. Do you know... I don't know if you've ever checked Etsy, okay? But on Etsy, they are selling dead pumpkin dead pumpkin stumps. People are getting big bucks for their pumpkin stumps. So this year, when everybody donates their pumpkins at the end of the season, for my chickens, because my chickens love pumpkins, as long as they haven't carved them, I can feed them to my chickens. I'm going to be taking off the stumps, and I'm saving those stumps for next year. Because I'm serious. They're getting big bucks for like six or seven pumpkin stumps. Because people are making their own pumpkins, and then they're using the realistic pumpkin stumps on their pumpkins. Who would have thought there was a market out there for dead pumpkin stump stumps? But there is. <laughs> so. 
All right, so that's one piece of Happy Mail. Then, I don't know if you all know that I joined um, Dre's um, Ranch Designs. She's going to have um, that Texas Ranch House coming up. Ranch House wreaths and more. She's got really awesome stuff on her site. But this is one thing that I said I loved and I wanted to know where she got it. Lo and behold, I got one in the mail. She sent me one. That's probably going to flake all over, but this is actually in the shape of a snowflake. And in her group, she showed an awesome way to decorate this with cardinals. I should have stretched it out ahead of time. Sorry about that. <laughs> so simple to work with. But check that out. And you know what? <gasps> oh, my cardinal sign would look so cute in the middle of that. So I'm going to have to decorate some of these with my cardinal sign. But check that out. Is that not adorable? Look. And basic. You don't have to put a whole lot in here. Ooh. This is one of those items that you can make a bunch ahead of time and sell a bunch of them. Because you wouldn't have to charge that much for them. Don't you just love that? And I probably don't have it stretched out all the way. But it's in the shape of a snowflake. I can't wait to do this one. And I think I'm going to have to use my uh, cardinal sign. She decorated it with cardinals and beads and such. Furries. I don't mean beads. But I think the thing to do with this is shake it out ahead of time before you're going to work with it. Because <laughs> you can see it. It gets stuff all over. But isn't that adorable? Again, you can make a sign with just the person's initial on it to put in the middle of that. That, to me, is so unique. So there you go. That was my happy meal. And that was so thoughtful of her to think of me, knowing that I liked it so much, and then sending me one. And I just love the pumpkin, Missy. Thank you. All right. I had to, to go. I have an appointment at 2. So I wanted to jump on this morning so you didn't miss it. I think we need to go more gold with this sign. Gold and black. Get rid of the paneling. Go gold and black with the poinsettias. And it'll match that, that ribbon perfectly. I know, right? <laughs> I thank you. Please spread the love. I really appreciate it. And if you have an idea for a sign, let me know. I will come up with a different color so it will match this ribbon more and I think um, I think we're on to something. I started making the little tear tray signs and my husband custom makes the little easels for the back so they sit upright in your tray or your centerpiece or your um, you know if you have um, like a centerpiece in the middle of your table I can now make signs in several different sizes that will just stand up on your display. Okay. There. These can be put with the little easels too. So if you need holes in your signs or you need easels, tell me when you're ordering. Okay. All right, I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me. I hope I gave you some ideas for some projects. And um, I may be changing my day next week 
I usually go on Tuesdays now for Tag Team Tuesday. I'm thinking of going back to um, Mondays. So just keep an eye on my Facebook page to be notified. When you mean, can you secure them in? What do you mean, Tequila? These are already glued on here with E6000 when you get them. I glue them before they ship. Is that what you meant? There's a little bit of delay, so I'm just making sure I answered your question. I made several of these. Um, they come apart for shipping. In your centerpiece, well, you could put um, one of these, um, what are they called? You could actually just E6000 to the back of a stem or one of those skewers. It will, it will stick. So that's what you can do. E6000, one of those wooden dowels to the back skewers. Boom. I've already done it. Um, I have a video out there. When I started making the small signs, they were mostly for floral arrangements and such. Um, yeah, all different sizes. This one here is a four by four and a half, which is what this one is, turned this way. The little one's two by three, and I'm missing the big one. Where is the big one? This was the big one, five by seven, which I have in several different autumn designs. And Halloween ones. This Halloween one was inspired by my um, gnome wreath. So it's got a little cat with some bats. And this one goes with the scarecrow. And this one here went with these three, these two. See, the Halloween one was inspired by my um, gnome wreath. The gnome is for sale in my Etsy shop. I had a hard time finding bats for his beard, so I had to make some. But that's what this was inspired by. I just wanted smaller signs for people. These are listed in my Etsy shop, which in the comments I have the link. They are known as tear tray signs. So it's like a whole little arrangement depending on the season. This was fall or autumn. This was Halloween. That's where I'm at so far. And I will be making some Christmas ones. And of course, more gnomes. You know me. <laughs> you are welcome. All right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for spreading the love. Um, keep watching. I'll have more ideas coming soon. I don't know what I'll be doing next week, but I'm probably going to switch my day back to Mondays. Um, Tuesday is a hard night for me, so, and I, I'm always available on Wednesdays, but usually two o'clock in the afternoon. So I thought I'd try it today in the morning since I can't do it this afternoon. All right, there you go. Simple embroidery hoop made into a wreath. Heck, you could even decoupage a piece of fabric on a on a pizza pan. Why not? One of the Dollar Tree pizza pans. Decoupage your Mod Podge, your fabric right onto the pizza pan. Put some holes in the top to accommodate your wire. Boom. Done. All right. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Have a great day.